Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. To commemorate the release of the final movie dedicated to the heroic rise of the Skywalkers, this review covers the Luke Skywalker van. It's a 132 scale kit from MPC, number 3210. So we're going to take you back to their first battle wagon. I'll bet you didn't know that before the Force took Luke to a galaxy far, far away, his primary mode of transportation was a custom Chevy van. The movie Star Wars was released on an unsuspecting public a long, long time ago, in May of 1977. But before that, MPC had released a futuristic van model called the Ultravan. Now, the immense popularity of the first movie prompted MPC to add a domed skylight to the kit and some decals representing the personal choices of both Luke and Darth as well as R2-D2 for their own kit. Now this kit's a 78 reboxing of the Ultravan with new decals and in the once popular 132nd slot car donor scale. It has 23 parts molded in black, transparent white, silver, styrene, clear, windows and uh, glow-in-the-dark decals. It's long out of production and has never been reissued but it's still available at online auction sites. It's a simplified snap kit and you can build it without glue or paint but adding details makes it more realistic and covers the swirls in the raw plastic. When you're done it's six and a quarter inches long, two and a half inches wide and two inches tall. And next we're going to show you the contents of the kit. This is my version of the open box review, but it'll only take you about 10 seconds. There's all the parts. But we will tell you how to put the model together and overcome any issues. We'll be using mostly uh, some liquid cement where we could um, uh, use some extra sticky power, although it is a snap kit. It will go together by itself. And as always, Use the safety and use guidelines uh, for any of the products that you see or hear used in the review. Here are the kit's decals and although they're very colorful, uh, the register is okay, but um, the glow in the dark barely glowed and there was some fine uh, micro uh, uh, cracks in this thing. So I decided to uh, just scan this in and print it out with a color printer on uh, some decal paper to recreate the decals. Uh, so I'll be using those on the actual uh, vehicle, uh, but you can try and use the uh, glow in the darks if you want to spray them with some uh, fixative and see if they survive the water. Construction starts with the wheel and tire assemblies. And as you can see here, the uh, rear wheels and uh, the fronts are different size, the rear wheels being uh, a little bit thicker and you can see the stubs are there. Uh, so gather those parts and clean up the wheels and the tires have that, um, well, <laughs> rib running right through the middle of the tread. Uh, it's nearly impossible to get rid of but uh, you're going to want to sand it down a little bit to keep it from being uneven. I dry brush some white paint onto the Goodyear uh, tire sidewall uh, script there and it, it looks pretty good. I used some white glue to put some toothpicks on the uh, hubs there so that I could paint the wheels and detail them. Since the Goodyear script came out pretty nice I decided to add some uh, Eagle uh, model type tires to the um, uh, sidewalls to give it a, a great looking performance appearance. The combination turned out pretty well you just apply decals like you would uh, any, any other and then I mounted them on some uh, uh, backing there and gave it a spray of a uh, flat so that it looked more like a real tire. I painted the inside of the hubs uh, aluminum and then I used the Molotel chrome pen to uh, highlight the um, uh, trim ring on the outside there and also I added a little uh, black wash to the center to bring out the highlight of the uh, hubs and uh, bolts there and they turned out pretty nicely. The kit supplied axles were pretty rough um, and they had a seam on them that I thought would hinder rotation so I simply cut off a, a piece of 3 uh, rod stock and used that to replace the axles. As you can see here they fit right into place in the suspension pieces. 
There's not much detail to the base because most of these were thrown away for slot car chassis. Uh, but we're going to do our best to detail that. Made in USA. Well, you won't see that script too often anymore. Below that uh, and around the gas tank are the bosses where an interior bulkhead is used to uh, separate the body from the chassis. So after painting the whole thing a flat black, I detailed the uh, frame with some uh, semi-gloss clear. Uh, the oil pan there is orange, Chevy orange, and of course the aluminum uh, colored uh, transmission and and then I added some dark gray to the uh, drive shaft and the uh, gas tank with some chrome straps. I left the front suspension piece raw and snapped it into place in the front there uh, with the axle showing through so you can see where that's at. The rear suspension was painted black uh, for the springs with some silver uh, pencil highlights and also the uh, interior a steel color and then the whole thing along with the drive shaft was given a, a little bit of rust uh, thinned rust coloring to uh, look like it had a little use on it. If you've cut the axles the right size uh, like the originals the, they won't show once the uh, they are installed and the wheels are placed on them so you can go ahead and glue your wheels into position on the axles on each side uh, of the chassis at this time. The body had a few issues, uh, including the black arrows here, which indicate the sink marks uh, where the, the bosses are in the roof uh, for that rear bulkhead. So go ahead and fill those and then uh, prime it and then uh, keep um, at it until the, uh, the sinks go away. You see the one in the front here, which uh, is just on the front edge of the hood. Same issue applies there. Apply your favorite putty, uh, wait for it to dry, and then sand it nice and smooth. The rear quarter panel and the roof uh, has a small um, parting line on it, so you want to scrape those clean and sand them smooth. Also uh, in the front, uh, the front quarter panel there has the same kind of an issue. You can see here the black arrows indicate the uh, parting line down that section. Once you've got the body in good shape and all the sinks are filled and parting lines are gone, give it a nice coat of prime. I went ahead then and uh, I painted the front fascia and grill section uh, with some uh, silver uh, color. This is called uh, diamond dust. It's a tester's color. And then glued it into position. And then I taped off uh, the bumper uh, surround and the uh, uh, grill section there. Uh, uh, but the uh, pan was left open for paint. After a good coat of prime is dried again, uh, give it a light sand. And then I um, masked off the rear window. That's a not a clear window so uh, I painted that with some of the diamond dust color and um, then I taped over that and I trimmed it off so that it covered up the back window. I then painted the whole thing starting with a few light coats uh, you can just see it's just tacky in this one and then I went ahead and gave it some heavier coats until I got a good even coat using some testers classic white. The arrow indicates where I started to remove the uh, masking from the rear window after the paint had dried. Here's the vehicle after uh, uh, the masking was removed from the rear window. Likewise, I pulled the tape off uh, and the masking there from the front grill and bumper. Uh, I don't know where the headlights are, but um, they're super secretly installed in there somewhere. Also, you see some black louver panels at the top of the surround, uh, just behind the front bumper. Uh, and then this forward piece here is um, the rear bumper, and that'll be painted uh, or chrome trimmed. And as you can see, uh, after the chrome trim, uh, you place that into position. This is mocked up here on the back of the vehicle. Like the rear bumper, I, I went ahead and added some, uh, some bare metal foil chrome uh, to the front, you just uh, apply that like tape and cut off the excess, burnish it down, and you've got a, a really nice looking chrome bumper. After everything has thoroughly dried, uh, it's time to apply the decals. And as uh, I mentioned, I, I printed these out from uh, a replication of the actual decals so that I had a nice clean uh, decal uh, that had uh, good uh, viability to it. Also, because it's so large, I sectioned the decal. You can see the red lines outline where I cut those apart and then added them later. 
Uh, you can see here I'm going to add the uh, the blaster gun there to his hand. With black lines you can put them into position and nobody can see the difference. So here you see the uh, mural decals on each side uh, on this side and uh, I, I guess uh, Luke wanted to uh, scare the uh, the bad guys uh, just by looking at the van coming down the road. Uh, and here's the one in the back uh, that was second so that it fit together. Uh, it's kind of tacky but I even left a trademark item on it. Uh, but there it is. May the force be with you. Well the domed skylight here must have gotten Luke thinking about the stars because we know what happens later. But anyway, we're going to treat this just like an airplane cockpit and we're going to go ahead and uh, add some foil to the frame. In this case, my uh, highly polished um, uh, titanium frame uh, is going to be left just as it is. Normally, you'd mask off the other areas and paint the frame. But for this one, uh, chrome looked just great. We'll start working on the interior now and there were actually some cold shuts uh, that's where the uh, plastic doesn't actually m meld together on a part. Uh, so those had to be filled. I used a little uh, Mr. Surfacer to fill those cracks. Then I'm going to use some uh, bare metal foil after I paint that white uh, for a base coat and I blacked out the uh, instrument pods there with some uh, flat black paint and added a couple of uh, gauge decals that I found on the internet I just printed them out and uh, put them into place there and uh, of course the AM FM radio uh, a necessity in everybody's uh, Star Wars vehicle uh, was blacked out too. There's not much detail in the interior but you can see uh, of course it's molded in the silver gray. Uh, the, the shifter there for the uh, console is just one little stub sticking up so we're going to detail it the best we can. First we're going to spray that with some of the diamond dust coloring and um, then we'll detail it um, uh, with a little bit of extra color. Uh, the center console, the um, pedals there in front, and the carpeting, of course, were given a, bl a flat black treatment. And I replaced the little stub of a shifter with a little T-handle, uh, just a tiny piece of uh, rod stock glued together there. And here you can see the uh, dash has been added. Along with the steering wheel, there's not much to detail there. I just, uh, the chrome spokes, and then uh, put that together. It all snaps together pretty nicely. No, no issues there. Next, we'll add the um, uh, window glass into place with the dome there. It, uh, you, the receivers there go right over the pins, um, and they, they actually do just kind of snap into place, but you might want to put a little dab of glue at the back end there uh, to keep that in position. Um, it seems to... Um, not really stay in place real well unless it's kind of tacked down with some glue. Well here's that bulkhead that I was talking about. It has some flash there on it but I decided to replace it so that I could extend the lengths uh, of the pins there about an eighth of an inch to give the van a little rake in the back end. It actually lowers um, you know or I should say kind of raises the body up so it gives that whole thing a little bit of, of a 70s vibe with a little rake to it. You can see here I have glued the um, uh, bulkhead into place in the back there on the roof and then it will fit into the chassis bosses. Uh, also we're going to glue or snap the uh, interior into place. You can use a little glue to keep it into position um, and then uh, that will um, uh, put the body and the chassis together. We need to clean up the exhaust or the side exhaust pipes here. The side pipes uh, you see here the red arrows indicate uh, parting lines pretty heavy on this. You'll need to uh, scrape that off and sand it smooth. Uh, on the box art they're uh, chrome but I decided to uh, give mine the flat black treatment. Uh, and you see the bumper here it was uh, just mocked up there earlier. We're going to glue that into position now. So, faster than you can say Death Star, we've got uh, what looks like a completed van. Um, the uh, interior and the windows are now in place. And uh, once you glue the uh, body to the chassis, uh, you can see there's a little bit of extra rake there at the back. So, uh, as we used to call it, kind of jacked up. And uh, it gives it a mean look uh, to maybe um, help Luke catch up with that uh, Darth Vader guy. 
And uh, here it is, uh, the view from underneath, you can see there's no inner fender wells. It's um, basically a, a body that goes on a chassis meant for the slot car track. We're going to work on the back end now. And uh, what I did was I surrounded the bezels, the tail light bezels there, with some uh, bare metal foil. And then I uh, uh, used a toothpick and uh, an eraser to push those down around and get them burnished onto the tail light areas. I then went ahead and added some tail light red to the uh, stoplight section and painted the uh, interior portion there uh, white for the tail lights. So there's one last detail to attend to and that is the uh, mirrors. Now there's two of them, uh, although they seem a little small even for a 1 32nd, uh, but they had also uh, sinkholes on top which needed to be filled and smoothed out. So I went ahead and uh, did that and painted the uh, mirrors white, gloss white, with uh, a little silver spot for the um, uh, mirror reflective portion, and then added those to the uh, left side, the right side. I, I just filled that hole, didn't even use the right side mirror. So there you have it. And lest you think you are a real maven of all things Star Wars, just make note that long before Luke hopped into an X-Wing fighter, he was chasing Darth around with a hot Chevy V8 van. Uh, I guess we can all assume that Darth's mill must have been just a little bit faster, and apparently R2-D2 was just tagging along behind as usual. So if I were you, I'd find one and put it on my shelf. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find that icon in the lower right of every video. Or you can find us on Facebook or our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.